Hey there, welcome back. Well, today I'm going to show you how I solved a problem that I had at home. I've got a ventilation system that ensures my house stays dry and comfortable all year round. And it's really quiet, so it's easy for it to malfunction and not be operating, and I wouldn't be any the wiser. So I needed some sort of a sensor to measure and make sure that the airflow was moving correctly in the system. So I came across this sensor on the SparkFun website. This is an air velocity sensor on a breakout board. It's called the FS3000. This sensor operates using I2C communication. It measures airflow from 0 to 7.23 meters per second with an accuracy of 5%. Operates on an input voltage from 2.7 up to 3.3 volts. When I look more closely, I found that there are actually two versions of the sensor. There's a 1005 and a 1015. So the 1015 actually offers 0 to 15 meters per second. So I thought I'd order this one so I had some extra capacity if I needed it. Now the way that these sensors work is based on a thermopile theory. So what happens, it's got a tiny little heater in the middle of the sensor and then there are two thermopiles on each side and effectively what happens when there's no airflow the temperature from the heater makes the thermopiles heat up and when there's an airflow that basically cools the temperature and reduces the temperature of the thermopiles. Now I had to work out how to get this data into Home Assistant so I thought I'd try my luck and have a look and see whether this was available on ESP Home. As luck would have it ESP Home already had a library for this product. So all I had to do was copy the configuration and go and create a new ESP Home device. Now there are a whole lot of different types of ESP32s. Um, I'm just using a basic original ESP32. Those are the really cheap ones that you can find on AliExpress. But you might, for example, want to choose a later model ESP32, like a C3 or a C5 or a C6. You'll see here that some of these now offer things like Thread and Zigbee. So if you want to use those protocols, order one of those Zigbee boards. So if we have a look at the pins on our ESP32 dev kit, We've got basically these pins over here. GPIO 22 is the SCL and the GPIO 21 is the SDA pin. So those are the two pins that we need for the I2C connection. The other two pins we're going to use are to power the device. So from the data sheet, we know that it operates on 3.3 volts. So we're going to use the ground and the 3.3 volt output pins from the ESP. Next, we're going to install the code into ESP Home. So what we need to do here is create a new ESP Home device. I'm assuming that you've already installed ESP Home onto your Home Assistant. So we select New Device, and we're going to go New Device Setup. We're going to give it a name, click Next, and now we're going to skip the Connect version because we don't want to connect the device yet. So now you're going to select your device type based on what you chose. So you can use any of these chips, but I've just gone with a basic ESP32. Um, just don't go for an S6 or above because they're not available yet in ESP Home. So we select ESP32 and I'm going to skip this over here. So now it's created our instance here. Now we're going to go in and we're going to edit that instance. So you can see here that we've got the basic ESP Home setup. Um, it knows it's an ESP32 board. Um, we've got an API encryption key over the air encryption key. We've got our Wi-Fi password. Now just bear in mind that you need to set up your Wi-Fi password um, within the secrets section of um, the ESP Home or otherwise you would go in and you would type in your Wi-Fi pass over here. And then we've got our AP fallback. This is if you need to connect it later to your Wi-Fi. All right, so now I normally go in somewhere around line nine. Um, I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference, but I've always just started somewhere in the middle. So just make sure that your cursor is in line with the E and the L over here. It's very important with uh, YAML that it is all in line. So we're going to go and paste that in over there. Now you'll see it's come up with an error. You can see this red underlining here. 
So what it's telling us, first of all, um, it can either be a 1005 or a 1015. Now I'm actually using a 1015, so I'm going to change that over there. Um, we've still got another error, so let's just hover over and see what it says. So it's telling us, um, oh, the component sensor requires the component I2C. So we need to now go and create the I2C. So that's the communication protocol that it's going to use to communicate with the board. So we're going to paste the I squared C component in here. It looks like this. So it's I2C and then it's got the SDA, which the pin 21, as you saw when we looked at the pins, SCL is pin 22 and then it just says scan true. That's basically going to be scanning those ports. Now we can go and we can save this. So now you take your ESP32 board and you need to plug it into your computer or into Home Assistant. So it might either have a USB-A or a USB-C. Make sure whatever cable it is that you're using is carrying a data cable. It's not just a charging cable. So you're going to plug that in and then what you're going to do is plug it into either the computer that you're using or you're going to plug it into Home Assistant. So now we're going to select the install button and you're going to choose which device you're going to flash it from. So I'm doing it from this computer, the one that I'm running here, but I could be easily doing it directly from the device that's running Home Assistant on, which will have the ESP Home device on. So we go plug into computer. Now you want to make sure that you select the correct device over here. So the best way to find out which one of these it is, is to unplug it and plug it back in and then you will see that it pops up. So now select that device, go connect and it'll start preparing the installation. So next I went and I connected the wires up. So there were no header pins on the air velocity sensor. So what I did was I just soldered them directly to the board. So we've got the ground pin, 3.3 volts, SDA, and SCL pins, which are the four that we need. And then what I've done, I've taken those across and we've connected them up to the 3.3 volts here and the ground on the ESP32. And then I've connected it up here to pins 21 and 22, which is basically connecting from SCL to SCL, SDA to SDA. Now, if you look closely at the sensor, you'll see that there's a little arrow pointing that way. So the airflow needs to come in on this side and then move through that little gap there and then exit on the other side. So it's very important when you install this into the pipe in your airflow duct system that the flow is coming along here and heading directly through there and out of the other side. So once you power it up after it's finished flashing, you'll see that you get a red LED on your ESP32 board and a green LED showing there on the air velocity sensor to show you the power is coming through there. Now go into Home Assistant, Settings, Devices and Services, and you'll see that it's popped up over here. So we just go Add, so we can add the sensor in as a device within Home Assistant. So if I now start blowing onto the sensor, you'll see that we get an airflow velocity starting over here in kilometers per hour. So next I installed the sensor into the duct and as you can see, we're now showing an air velocity of between six and eight kilometers per hour. Now I wanna tr try and smooth this number out a bit. I was hoping that I could try and um, smooth that volatility out a little bit. So I found a piece of code and let's try it. So I went back into my ESP home and I pasted the piece of code in here. As you can see, it's a filter with what they call a sliding window moving average with a window size of 10. So I'm assuming you can adjust these numbers if you're not quite getting the result that's desired. Now, don't worry, I will paste all of this code into the uh, notes of this video so you can copy this over if you need it. So now what we're gonna do is save this and we can now install this wirelessly over the air because it's connected to our internet. So after installing that filter, you'll see now that it's much more constant. It's literally sitting around 7.5, 7.6 kilometers an hour. So much more the type of result I was looking for. 
So in summary, this has been a really interesting project. The sensor itself is pretty expensive at around $60, but I did find that it is really accurate. And now that I've got that smoothing uh, little filter in place, it's giving me an absolutely fantastic result. So the benefit of this is now I can see really if, for example, the fan fails, the power goes out, or the filters are becoming blocked so it starts reducing an airflow so I can monitor it very carefully and I can control things based on that flow I could send myself an alert or something to tell me that there's either a low flow rate or no flow rate at all so please let me know what you think of the sensor let me know what other sensors you might be interested in building um, I really enjoy ESP home I think it's absolutely fascinating hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.